Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 251, featuring the second installment of my interview with Yerjmi. In this part of the interview, we talk about his work on the Atari 8-bit uh, systems, uh, the Atari ST, as well as uh, how he composes music and why he doesn't like to listen to his own stuff. <laughs> a lot of great stuff here. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Yerjmi. Let's move on then to the Atari work. I noticed you had the Atari 8-bit album called XL Digital? Yeah. So what made you uh, want to do an album on the Atari 8-bit? Um, uh, actually, mm, this is uh, a little bit strange because uh, I have two of uh, those computers. Actually, uh, maybe a little bit more, but uh, two of them are mine. Uh, I don't really use them. But I have uh, many, many friends on uh, Atari 8-bit scene. It's because, uh, this, first, they are very cool guys and they like to drink a lot and a lot and a lot again. And believe me, <laughs> this is true. Uh, second thing is, uh, there is actually no uh, ZX Spectrum scene in Poland anymore. Uh, so. Um, after uh, some time, you know, we got old and uh, we finished uh, wars against one platform, 8-bit <laughs> platform against another. Uh, so uh, uh, we simply uh, met each other somehow and uh, I started to uh, to go for very very parties, meetings, and so on and so on, and also I was uh, a user of Atari ST, so uh, I think it's somehow it might be important too. Uh, but uh, I never actually made anything uh, serious for this computer, uh, so I wanted to uh, to make something uh, something different. Of course. Uh, as usual with my primitive brain, the uh, pocket chip appeared to be too complicated. <laughs> uh, well, it was, of course, to be um, expected. Uh, so, uh, I chose the, a little bit uh, simpler way for me and a little bit more difficult way for a coder of a demo. And uh, uh, I decided to try uh, to make some mod files. They have an uh, uh, editor called Neo Tracker, and uh, very good uh, editor, by the way. And uh, uh, I just have to, I, I just had had to uh, remember that uh, I have only uh, 50. Now I remember 50 kilobytes. Uh, for for the music, for samples and 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 music uh, itself, all the rest uh, went for for some uh, code and, uh, and and stuff. So uh, I simply wanted to uh, to make something for 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 those people. And uh, when the demo was ready, I also recorded. Um, all music uh, from uh, real uh, hardware, uh, part from uh, Atari 800XL and part was probably from my Atari uh, 600XL uh, with uh, 64 kilobytes. I recorded, if I recall, 100 or, or 50, 50, I don't remember at the moment, uh, some small uh, CDs. Uh, I made some uh, cover art, you know, I cut it with scissors, <laughs> it was it was uh, very painful. And I brought this stuff uh, to, to some Atari party, I put those uh, records uh, on the table, 
from one side one side of the table. Second side was some glass jar for money, and I say, take it and drop to the jar whatever you want, and I, and I don't care. I will uh, come back tomorrow and I will see <laughs> what happened. And uh, it was pretty successful. <laughs> wow. nobody, nobody, you know, um, did steal anything uh, <laughs> from the jar, I hope. <laughs> Is that the demo that you uh, sent me the link to, Tokyo Gondwana? Uh, it was. Uh, um, it was actually um, uh, my uh, video clip. Uh, of course, it uh, contains some um, fragments of, of, of demos, uh, but also some uh, some sequences uh, 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 filmed. And I, I cannot say recorded, filmed. On a real um, eight millimeters uh, film, we we made this on in uh, in um, in eighties or uh, early nineties, and I used simply some of the scrap to make some uh, 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 some video clip with uh, with eighties feeling. Uh, I noticed that one part. There's Alf. Playing the guitar, uh, <laughs> that, man, yes. that is that is appropriate right there. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was made. Uh, uh, entire stuff was made by uh, Larek, this uh, guy uh, from Atari 8-bit scene from uh, from Poland. And uh, uh, I didn't know I, I didn't know actually what uh, song would the best, but uh, I finally I have chosen this uh, Kraftwerk like. Uh, music, electro, uh, techno pop stuff, and so on. And uh, you could say this is this is uh, my official video clip. <laughs> Moving on then to the Atari ST. I know you're a big fan of the the 520, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I guess that's the yeah the yeah, YM Digital. YM Digital is your yeah. Atari ST ST band. So, what 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 are those guys like? Um. Uh, of course, I love Amiga very much. This is without uh, doubt. However, uh, this is very annoying to me that uh, people somehow tend to uh, forget uh, about Atari ST. And uh, this is a very, uh, very good machine too. Actually, all, all, almost all the games uh, uh, look exactly the same or they are very similar. Um, uh, sometimes also music, but of course, um, Atari ST has uh, Yamaha only, which means uh, theoretically it should be um, able only to. The problem is, if you have CPU fast enough, you can make virtually everything on any computer. And I wanted to make um, digital music, um, four channels digital music on um, Atari ST, regular one on uh, Yamaha uh, chip. Uh, so uh, we established uh, a band with Factor 6, uh, Czech musician uh, from Czech Republic, uh, musician from uh, ZX Spectrum, now from also from um, Atari ST and from Commodore 64. And I suppose also he makes something for uh, Amstrad CPC. Anyway, uh, first we were using uh, standard software from 90s, so uh, it was um, only uh, four uh, channels of digital, mu of digital music. Um, however, later uh, there ap appeared uh, a guy who made uh, hex tracker that uh, uses CPU very heavily and strongly to to force uh, really some strange stuff can uh, 
can be uh, took out from the regular AUI chip and the Atari ST. Um, you can actually you can make um, as many digital uh, channels uh, as you want. I mean, depending on the CPU. However, uh, as for me, uh, I finally decided to use um, uh, six channels on uh, no, on Y uh, Y uh, one uh, Yamaha one AY chip. Uh, you know, this is some. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's from one side. It uh, it must uh, sound not so bad, uh, and from the second side, of course, uh, the more channels, uh, the better. So six channels is um, okay, and uh, in the newest uh, uh, album of uh, our band. Uh, I have several songs, and almost every one of them, uh, this is digital six-channel stuff from regular Atari uh, ST. Of course, everything um, except the CPU, everything uh, requires uh, RAM memory. So, uh, I, at the moment, I have uh, four megabytes and uh, this is enough. And I was even um, able to play concert uh, uh, lately. It was um, in the autumn uh, last year. Uh, of course, I had uh, Amiga, ZX Spectrum, and also this time uh, Atari ST. So uh, it was some, you know, battlefield test for the machine. And uh, I suppose it, it worked. Uh, quite well. There is even some uh, video uh, from from the concert, from uh, the beginning of the concert, and uh, the beginning was made exactly from from Atari ST. So, when you compose a song, how do you do that? Do you have a tune in your head, and then you try to program it, or do you just get in and play around until you hear something that you like? You know, how does uh, it, how does it actually work? It depends, uh, actually, because uh, this is both. Sometimes when uh, uh, people write to me and uh, they want some song, uh, so I'm not prepared, you know, uh, and then I simply uh, sit and try to, uh, to invent something. Uh, sometimes it's uh, in the opposite, and maybe it, uh, this is even better um, um, case, because uh, sometimes I have some idea, and then I sit and try to to write it down. Of course, like I said, I I don't have uh, any clue about uh, uh, this musical notation stuff, so. Uh, uh, it's it's good when I have a, a good idea at home, because if it's not, for example, when I was um, coming here to chat with you, I was coming by bus, but uh, it's about an hour, and I invented a pretty catchy tune, uh, and uh, of course I have no idea how it, how it go you know at the moment i i cannot uh, you're just uh, riding the bus and this tune came to you and uh, at, at the moment it's it's completely lost and uh, oh. probably i will never think of it again so uh, sometimes it's hard you don't carry a little recorder with you at all times just in case the inspiration strikes uh, I suppose um, I would look rather like nuts or something, <laughs> singing, uh, you know, in, in the bus among a lot of people to some small device, um, which is it's rather a bad idea, I suppose. <laughs> well, let's see, in 2013 you released uh, Micro Songs. And this was uh, published by Cheat Beats in Japan. Is this the first time you've had a commercial CD for sale? Uh, actually, I don't know, uh, because uh, I don't keep uh, track of this old stuff. Uh, I suppose um, 
uh, eight bit peoples also uh, as far as I know or maybe as far as I remember they also uh, sell uh, their uh, albums published um, by them I mean they put this stuff on the internet however also uh, they make some some um, Mm, number of, of of records maybe maybe I'm wrong but uh, I suppose so uh, another thing was in uh, this um, ubic tune ubic tunes I don't remember now uh, it's made um, some label made by uh, C Jeff uh, it's the strange so, strange light under my bed yeah 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 with uh, in style of Tangerine dream but made uh, only on traditional uh, machines uh, and uh, some old computers and they are probably uh, somehow in, in uh, to, to some degree uh, this is probably uh, commercial um, but uh, this one uh, mentioned by you uh, is maybe it's a little bit more because uh, uh, they make uh, physical album albums in physical form, uh, and um, also they um, uh, simply charge. As far as I know, they uh, charge for uh, downloading. So uh, uh, the only free aspect uh, here was uh, uh, online listening. So you might say maybe. Maybe it was a kind of uh, uh, first time in uh, in this way. Kind of just thought of something. So, if we were to get all of the songs you've composed and just play them back to back, how long would it take to get through the whole your whole oeuvre? I'm sorry, but I have no this, uh, simply the slightest idea what do you mean <laughs> this, uh, this time I, i'm just trying to it. trying to wonder you know how many about how many minutes worth of music have you created so if um, you yeah if you want if you took all the songs that you've put out there you know and just played them back to back how how long would it take to get through the whole set it would be uh, it would be rather huge i don't know and uh, uh I wouldn't even try, but uh, uh, even if we uh, use only some reasonable stuff and not the stuff uh, made when I was almost, almost a child, and uh, if we even exclude uh, some professional mus electro electronic music and leave only um, Cheap tunes, uh, modules, and and this this kind of stuff. I still think it would be a really huge amount, uh, and uh, like I said, considering the fact I I don't remember even the titles of my uh, own songs. So um, that amazes me that you, you told me that last time you don't even like to listen to your own own stuff, right? That's true because uh, this is very annoying. Uh, <laughs> Annoying. Like I, yes, like I said, I have to s spend um, uh, many, many hours uh, while making it. Then I have to record it. Then I have make some not not too big, but anyway, some mastering uh, for the recording. Uh, then I have to. Uh, make a proper um, order of the songs um, so um, I listen to it uh, so um, often you know that uh, at some point I simply uh, just turn it off or maybe I have to get drunk so this is it uh, and uh, there is um, very uh, few uh, songs or very few albums uh, of, of mine that I can actually from time to time listen without this oh, again, <laughs> no. Uh, for okay. example, uh, I uh, for many years I wanted uh, to make a cover of Sailor Moon because uh, 
I'm a huge fan of uh, manga, anime, and, and this Japanese stuff. And uh, there is uh, some cartoon uh, Sailor Moon with sometimes with uh, very good songs, uh, J-pop, you know. And uh, I wanted to make uh, a cover of it. I I realized this will be hard stuff because uh, Japanese people like to make very strange chords in uh, very strange places. Uh, this is still pop music, but but this is really. Mm, uh, sometimes this is really hard. So uh, I, uh, at this one, I think I spent something like uh, three months to 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 make it work. And uh, um, additionally, I wanted it to uh, be music for uh, so-called turbo sound. It's um, two AY chips connected to ZX Spectrum or uh, ZX81. It's called. Uh, turbo sound. So uh, actually, I had uh, 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 I had to uh, uh, Freud uh, uh, mistake. I had to uh, make this uh, song twice for two uh, chips. Then I had to mix it. So yes, I I can say I hate this now, and this is a problem because it was my beloved song. From uh, from uh, this uh, from this cartoon, so this is how it works. I simply don't try to 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 not uh, uh, listen to my stuff, and I don't do it. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back uh, next week, but if not, it'll definitely see me in two weeks. Take a little, a little family trip. I'm going to try to get the episode done before then, but you know how things can get sort of chaotic right before a little vacation. So if you don't hear from me for a couple of weeks, you'll know what happened. Uh, but I'll definitely get the third installment of this interview up as soon as I can. As always, thank you very, very, very much, guys, for your support of the show. Really means a lot to me. If you like to support the show, remember you can do that at any level. You want a dollar an episode, dollar a month, five bucks an episode, you know, whatever fits within your budget and what you think the show is worth to you, uh, any amount, I really appreciate it. And by the way, guys, I've got some fantastic interviews coming up. You <laughs> wouldn't believe. I got uh, Fergus Urquhart. I've got uh, uh, Robert Woodhead is coming on. I've got uh, Susan Manley and Ed Freeze. The, uh, one of the men responsible for the Xbox. So lots of fantastic stuff, believe you me. Really excited about these upcoming interviews as well as the uh, reviews. And uh, speaking of that, uh, news from the Matt Cave is really only one major news item as far as I'm concerned is I got my uh, copies of the Divinity Original Sin retail box, the Kickstarter edition, also this really cool uh, hardcover art book. Uh, you know I, know, I know a lot of you guys supported this too. Hopefully you got the, the box copy because they did a fantastic job on this. It includes, or at least mine includes, there's different tiers of course. It's got a poster, uh, two different kinds of cards. I think these are just regular playing cards uh, with of course, you know, the artwork. And this is some type of like Magic the Gathering type game. I really haven't had a chance to explore that. Stickers, a soundtrack, of course the uh, cloth map. They even put that in a little Ziploc bag, make it even more. Make it even more nostalgic, I guess. Uh, let's see what else. Of course, the printed manual, the uh, DVD case. But this is just fantastic. And, you know, every time I play this game, I've been playing the hell out of this thing. Probably got a couple hundred hours into it by now. Uh, but people keep asking me about it, and I do intend to do a review in uh, the next couple of weeks uh, when I get done with it. Uh, but just in general, right now, if you're on the fence about it, I say go ahead and get the damn thing. There's a few irritating things about it for sure. And it definitely is difficult, but overall, I really love this game. I haven't really gotten into a game this much in quite a while, so highly recommend it. 
Uh, you can get it on Steam or GOG if you don't have a, if you didn't spec the uh, Kickstarter. All right, so what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, this week I've got the Old Chub Scotch Ale. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure I haven't done this one already, but if I have, uh, you know, my apologies. I guess you can have fun seeing if I gave it the same rating and made the same sorts of comments. Uh, but it's a Scotch Ale, which is a variety I'm not really familiar with. Not exactly sure even what it means. <laughs> if they put a little scotch in it or if it's made maybe in some, maybe it's uh, brewed in some of the barrels or something. But anyway, Scotch Ale, it's apparently like Sputnik, according to the can. And this is uh, brewed by the Oscar Blues Brewery out of uh, Colorado, USA. 8% alcohol, so definitely uh, definitely on up there. A virtual planetoid. Anyway, I just thought it looked cool and I like the idea of a Scotch Ale. I like Scotch, I like Ale. You know, how can you go wrong mixing the two? Yeah, I actually could probably think of a few ways you can go wrong with that. But anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this old chub here in the rather excellent drinking horn. And as I sniff i am pondering what an old chub is <laughs> i guess an old one is better than a younger one or is the younger one better than the older one or should i be alarmed at drinking something called old chub but anyway let's give it a taste uh, oh by the way the smell hardly hardly there you really have to be concentrating to smell it but what I am smelling is something kind of cherry with a little bit of a smoky quality to it, so let's give it a taste. Uh, Taste-wise, uh, very sweet, very creamy, very thick, uh, not bitter at all, quite smooth, actually. And uh, the taste, uh, the things I'm tasting here, you get the sort of cherry, a little bit of a, a syrupy-like quality to it, uh, a little bit of a maybe a, a grape like a grape nuts <laughs> a cereal kind of taste. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Surprisingly light. Um, you know, it doesn't feel heavy, but uh, very flavorful actually. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go a full five out of five drinking horns on this old chub. It's uh, interesting. It's kind of hard to describe exactly how this tastes and smells, but definitely something different. And I like the fact that it's. Uh, you know, it's quite drinkable. You don't taste the alcohol. There's no bitterness <laughs> no, at all. So I imagine a lot of you guys probably enjoy this. Old Chub. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. So I was looking for quotations about music, and man, I'm really happy with the one I, I found. It's from Victor Hugo, uh, the author of Les Miserables. It goes something like this. Music expresses that which cannot be said, and on which it is impossible to be silent. See you guys next week, hopefully. I don't like meat from the grocery store. It makes me nervous.